Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello, Facebook family and friends. What a joy to be able to welcome you today to this wonderful broadcast. You know, it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God to teach you the word of God. Remember, this season we are on with Riot Live and the Counselor every day. Teaching and teaching, bringing clarity to God's word. You must remember that every time we study the word of God, the intent is to equip you so that you can also equip others. Brother Paul said to Timothy, the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. The word of God is going to come with so much power. Revelation knowledge is going to come, you know, to you through the teaching of God's word on this broadcast. And every day, the word comes twice on this platform. 12 noon GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1 every day right here on Facebook. Except when we go live each evening at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And I'm so excited because we're examining very critical subjects of the scripture, doctrinal exegesis, bringing clarity and equipping you in the knowledge of Christ. Just before we get in the service of today, I want to also mention, if you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church, two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship, where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning, where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. Fasting your seat bells right now as I take you into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy view. A believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is Christ. You don't break Christ. Once you're born again, you're on a sure foundation. If things are not working, it's not because you are under a curse. It's not because you are not born again. No. Things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the Holy Ghost gave you direction. But it cannot be because there's a foundation. A Christian has no foundation to break. A Christian cannot be possessed by devils. To be possessed means Satan entered your spirit and sat there. That's possession. How can a Christian who is born of God, the DNA of God is in you. How can Satan and God live together? So that is a deception and it's fraud to the body of Christ. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and Ask the Counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Realities. Ministry, Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time, Mondays to Saturdays, 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 or Comfort FM 95.1 or Excel FM 106.9 or Radio Aquaibo 90.5 or Unio FM 100.7 or and Heritage FM 104.9 or
and also live on Sunday, 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Oyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer. Be there. We've been examining why things happen the way they happen on the earth. And in the past few weeks, I've looked at a number of things. And I'm still going to be continuing in the second phase of this teaching. This teaching is in phases. And we were examining things like where do babies come from? Where do babies go after they die? Why are children born deformed and blind? We also looked at where does rains come from? Why do we have floods? Why do we have earthquakes? If God is a good God, why does he allow all of that to happen? We also examined, you know, all of those details. We looked at where human governments came from, democracy, where it came from, you know, and all of that. We began to talk about, you know, God's sovereignty. When we're talking about God is absolutely in control. God has never lost control. He has always been in control. He is still in control. Absolutely in control. And we took time to do exegesis and explain because it's not enough to just say God is in control. If you just say God is in control, then it will be that it is God that allows all the evil to happen. So it must be explained. It's a statement that requires explanation. We're still on why things happen the way that they do happen. You need to put on your thinking caps because I love to promote the new creation intelligence. The new creation is very intelligent. It's an intelligent being in God. The first creation, Adam, was so intelligent that he could find out the works of God. He could identify the works of God. God made animals and Adam named all of them. And the Bible tells us whatever he called them was their name thereof. These animals, whatever Adam called them from the beginning of time became their names eternally. And today people go to the university to discover what Adam just spoke without going to any school. It shows you the intelligence that is supposed to be in the new creation. Adam was so intelligent, very intelligent. He could discover things about the planet that nobody taught him. Just discovery, you know. And when people give themselves to a lot of thinking and a lot of productive and creative thinking, they arrive at intelligent conclusions. And that's why as a believer, you must always put on your thinking cap. What religion does is it tells you to take away your thinking cap and be a zombie. And just do whatever you're asked to do without thinking. That's what religion does. But true Christianity, it's reasoning with God to arrive at a discovery that gives you the ability, you know, to be on the cutting edge. That gives you the ability to have the advantage over creation. Because man is God's masterpiece where creation is concerned. And man is supposed to subdue and exercise dominion over all that God created. And it's important that you think because as believers, if we don't think, we will never rule and reign the way we are designed to on this planet and in the earth. So we are in Christ, the second Adam, the man that came out of the last Adam. So let's examine this subject a bit further on why things happen the way they happen on the earth. The Bible is our guide to why things happen the way they happen. Our only guide. There's no other material elsewhere where you will find out why things happen the way they happen outside of the Bible. The new creation is a creation of knowledge. A creation of knowledge. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That the man of God, which you are supposed to be, the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. So the man of God ought to be perfect. In fact, look at the way Brother Paul will address Titus in Titus chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So brother Paul is telling Titus that with the knowledge of God's word, you can convince those who contradict the word of God. Gainsayers. You can convince them. 
Actually, the way it is in the original Greek is you can take the rug from under their feet. That's the way the original Greek puts it. That with, when you are armed with revelation knowledge, you can take the rug from under the feet of those who are gainsayers. When you're fully armed with the knowledge of God's word. And that's the essence of scripture. Because the scriptures are given to us for evidence. Profitable for reproof. The word reproof is the word evidence in the Greek. That is, our evidence comes from scripture. So if we're going to deal with why things happen the way they happen on the earth, we must derive our evidence from the scriptures. The scriptures, the holy scriptures. So we know why we are convinced about the things that we see. We do not depend on extra biblical sources. Listen carefully. We do not depend on extra biblical sources where the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the things of God are concerned. We do not depend on extra biblical sources. This is the only book authorized, the Bible. The only book authorized, 66 books authorized to give us evidence, reproof, doctrine, instruction in righteousness. The only valid material is the Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible is the only book on earth that is called holy. The word hagios, sacred, set apart. And that's the only book that has passed the test of being qualified to be included in the canon of scripture. What is the test for any book being included in the canon of scripture? It must pass the test of having the same message as the rest of the 65 books. Any book that doesn't have that message. Is not qualified to be part of the canon. That's why the 66 books have one message. Tying all of them together. Jesus said to the Jews. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. So any book that doesn't have the message of the Christ in it. It's not qualified to be part of the canon of scripture. Every book, the 66 books of the Bible, all of them have one message. The revelation of the Christ. Whether in seed form or in types and shadows or in prophecy or in promises or in parables or in doctrine. See that? The epistles. All of it put together is one message. Can I have a good amen? So brother Paul wrote this and he was referring to the Old Testament. When he says all scripture, the word scripture is the Greek word graphe. It means all writings, all scripture, all writings making reference to the Old Testament, the canon. All right, the 39 books are called the scripture or the canon. The New Testament is called the revelation of the scripture. So Old Testament scripture New Testament is the revelation of the scripture because the scripture is mystery. So because it is concealed, the New Testament is what, you know, opens up the concealed scriptures. So the New Testament is the revelation of the Old Testament. Every writer of the epistle, the New Testament, the epistle took his insight from the Old Testament. So the epistles are derived from the old testament you didn't hear that the epistles are derived from the old testament the writers of the new testament just took the old testament studied it and brought out the revelation of the old testament to a section of the bible called the epistles which is the revelation of the scriptures now when we look at the bible very carefully you find out that everything that the bible does is to unveil to us God's plan, God's mind, God's intent, God's will, God's purpose, and above all, God's character. The mission of the scriptures is to unveil all of those realities to us so that when we understand God's plan, intent, purpose, and we understand his character, it enables us to relate with God effectively. It makes our relationship with God more efficient because now we know his character, we know his nature. We know his will. We know his intent. We know his plan. We know his purpose. We know what God can do. We know what God never does. So because we know all of these realities, we are more effective in our relationship 
with God. Alright? So why do things happen the way they happen on the earth? Is it okay for the new creation to claim ignorance of anything in life? No. You should not be asked anything in life where God is concerned and you say, I don't know. Or I think as a new creation you should be able to be armed with answers for everything that relates to God and the things that God has made available to mankind very important because if you are not armed that way you cannot be effective even in your relationship with God and if you remember in the last in the last part of this series I was saying if you don't know God's character you will not even know when to rebuke Satan you will even know when to rebuke Satan and you'll be thanking God for what God is innocent about. You'll be giving him thanks for things he's not even aware of. And that's why knowledge, you can't beat knowledge. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So you must desire to know. Hosea said, you will know when you follow on to know. You will know when you follow on to know. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I like that. The word darkness has to do with confusion. He that followeth me shall not walk in confusion, or he that followeth me shall not walk in ignorance. Darkness shall not walk in darkness, shall not walk in ignorance, shall not walk in confusion. But he will have the light of life. The light of Zoe. He will have the light of Zoe. First John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now give me verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. In him is no darkness is no confusion in him is no ignorance at all god has zero tolerance for ignorance in him there is no ignorance at all god is a god of knowledge in him there is no darkness satan loves darkness because darkness is Satan's domain of operation. Ignorance. In him there is no confusion at all. So if I am in fellowship with God the Father, there should be no room for me to tolerate darkness, confusion, or ignorance. If I am in fellowship with God. Why? Because in him there is no darkness at all. No confusion at all in him. Now Jesus said something and a lot of people have misquoted what Jesus said. Now I'm going to read that scripture in a few minutes. Matthew 24. And I have taught you about Jesus in the four gospels. And I have taught you about Jesus exalted. So we have Jesus in the four gospels. And we have Jesus the risen Lord. And we've explained the difference between Jesus in the Gospels and Jesus exalted. Jesus in the Gospel is Jesus that was anointed with the Holy Ghost. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. But Jesus the risen Lord is Jesus exalted at the right hand of majesty on high. Who owns all the power in heaven on earth and under the earth. Jesus exalted. Now, in fact, in John chapter 5, Jesus said, The Father will reveal everything he does to the Son. But look at Matthew 24, because this is about the event of the last days, which people have concluded that that's the rapture. But you know that Jesus, 
never explained the rapture. Never. He never talked about the rapture and he never explained the rapture. The only person who talked about the rapture and explained the rapture was brother Paul. So don't get carried away by the events of the last days that Jesus talked about and the events of Jerusalem. Last days and Jerusalem because that's majorly what Jesus spoke about. Look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 to 36. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. He said, no man knoweth, not even the angels, but my father only. Then Mark 13, 32 makes the problem more complicated. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now it gets more complicated. Even I, the Son, I don't know the day. Not the angels, not myself, but my Father, which is in heaven. So now it gets more complicated. What was Jesus talking about? He talks about the thief in the night. What is Jesus talking about? And we know he never spoke about the rapture. So what could he be communicating? How is it that he doesn't know the day? Look at Acts chapter 1 again to complicate matters the more. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the father has put in his own power then jesus went further to talk about the power in verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth it is in the power of the father then he said you shall receive power it is in the power of the father Whatever you're asking me for. But that power you shall receive. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses on him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and other most part of the earth. Now, so I wonder when I read that even the son don't even know the day. And Jesus said, you know, the son shall come like a thief in the night. And we have watched a lot of movies. You know, like a thief in the night is going to take us away. Then we've read a number of things. We've watched movies where people were sleeping. One disappeared, the other one was still lying down. Because of the parable of Jesus, two shall be on the bed, one shall be taking the other left. Two shall be in the grinding mill, one will disappear, the other left. We've read all those things and because we read them without understanding, we conclude that Jesus is talking about the rapture. But that's not what he's talking about. Jesus never made any commentary on the rapture. Like I said again, it was Apostle Paul in his Pauline theology who dealt with the rapture and, you know, all of that. Now, but in John chapter 5, Jesus said something different. Now, I know you know that Brother John, among all the four Gospels, John cheated the others. Brother John cheated Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Because Brother John did not write the book of John till he had studied revelation knowledge. He never wrote his eyewitness account. He kept his account. Then when brother Paul and the rest have thought. And John has learned. Then John sat down and wrote the book of John. That is why the book of John does not have drama. No room for drama. While Matthew, Mark, Luke were busy talking about a guy called Joe. A virgin called Mary and the angel appeared. They were planning to get married. And suddenly she got pregnant and blah, 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 blah. And all that. And the you know, wise men came from the east and all that. While they were talking about that, John just showed up and said, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Now that's not eyewitness account. That's revelation knowledge. So brother John cheated Matthew, Mark, Luke because brother John did not write his gospel until after revelation. That's why the book of first John, first, second and third John is exactly like John the gospel. If you read first John chapter three, verse 16 and John three sixteen, they are all alike. You will think you are reading the same thing because uh, history has it that the book of John and the epistle of John were written the same week. 
he wrote the two books the same week. So you can see that spill over from revelation knowledge into his eyewitness account. Now, John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. So the Father loveth the Son, and showeth the Son. He will show him greater works. Greater works. He will show him, not at that material time, but eventually the Father will show the Son greater works. Now remember, the Son doesn't know the day. But eventually, the Father will show the Son everything that he doeth. Now so in the four Gospels, the Son didn't know. In the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John as the incarnate Christ, the son didn't know. And remember, when Jesus was on earth as the incarnate, he grew in knowledge. Hmm? He grew in wisdom. Is that true? He grew in stature. Okay? He was in the temple asking questions. Which means he didn't know everything. Why? Because of humanity. So as the incarnate, he didn't know everything. So when he said, only the father knows, he was talking as a man. Look at Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. He spoke those words because of the state he was in. When he was glorified after resurrection and sat at the right hand of the Father, all things were given to him, including revelation. Everything was given to him. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name, an office that is above all. All right? So to say Jesus doesn't know the day of the rapture, it will be that you have not understood the explanation we just gave right now. Now, so, in Matthew chapter 24 verse 36, that scripture has expired in the light of Christ today. Because the Father has shown to the Son greater works, greater things, all that the Father does, the Son knows everything. You know, we walk in the light. So, as believers, we are in fellowship with the light. Say with me very loud, I am in fellowship with the light. Say it again, I am in fellowship with the light now say with me i do not walk in darkness believers are walking in the light we're in fellowship with the light we are united with the light we are in a union with the light so we do not have any business with darkness so now because we're in the light we cannot say we do not know the day because if you say you do not know the day jesus will come it means you're in darkness you can be in fellowship with the light and at the same time be in darkness. Remember, in him, there is no darkness at all. So if you're in fellowship with him, you know the day. You know the day. And it's very interesting. Brother Paul now takes it. Let's look at what Brother Paul says now. Very interesting about the last days. Jesus said, he will come like a thief in the night. Then he said, no man knoweth the hour or the time. But brother Paul writes differently. Now please pay attention. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So the rapture ought to be a comfort and not a scare. People shouldn't be afraid of the rapture. Will you make it? 
It's not supposed to be an intimidation. Will you be there? It's supposed to be comfort. Comfort one another with these words. Now give me verse 13 again of the same First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. There's no point to be sad and sorrowful that a brother departed or a sister left. The only reason why you should be sorrowful is because you're not going to see them again. If you're going to see them, there's no point for being sorrowful. It's like a brother just left Nigeria for America and relocated to go and stay there. Will you cry and be sad that he's leaving? You'll even be happy that he's going to a better. So will you be crying that your brother left for America? You won't. Why? Because you know he's going to better his life. When brethren leave us and die, they went to better their lives. That's why we're not supposed to cry. We're not supposed to be sorrowful. Because they just relocated and this is even better because where they are, we are going to meet. And we are going to meet to be forever. So that's why we don't sorrow like the world. Of course, you will feel the absence of the person. You know, of course, you will miss all the good times, the great times, wonderful times. You will miss all of that. But they are not lost. It's only people without Christ that once they are gone, they are gone forever. We cry for people that are without Christ because that's the end. And we're going to discover some things in the course of this teaching. Where did your great-grandfathers go to? Where are your great-grandmothers? Where are they? We're going to explore them because we are not ignorant. The scripture holds all the answers to the perplexing questions of life. Except you don't know the scriptures. That's why Jesus said to them, you do err because you know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. The Bible is a book of answers to life questions. You didn't hear what I just said. The Bible is a book of answers to life's questions. And that's why you must search the scriptures. You study, you investigate. All the answers you need in life are contained in scripture. Except you do not study. So he says, I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you ignorant. Now. You will never hear Jesus say things like this because it was a mystery when Jesus walked the face of the earth. And that mystery is only revealed to the church. Now, read for me again 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Hmm. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. And you know, Jesus echoed the same thing in Matthew 24, 43 to 44. Read for me, Matthew 24, 43 to 44. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. 44. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now Jesus said that, and brother Peter also echoed same in Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. All right, so let's go back to brother Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 now. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. But ye, brethren, ye, brethren, are not in darkness, so that day will not overtake you like a thief. You will know the day. You will know the hour. You are not in darkness. It's only those that are in darkness that the day shall overtake them as a thief in the night. But you, glory to God, but you are not in darkness. You are in the light. Verse 6 and 7. 
Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Seven. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. They that sleep, sleep in the night. They that are drunken are drunken in the night, but you are not of the night. You are not of they that sleep. You are not of the night. You are of the day. So you will know the day. Glory to God. Yeah. When the day is at hand, we will just be saying, you know, when is they were out of here? When is they were out of it? Actually, about 1.30 p.m. will be the flight. We'll be out of this place. Glory to God. We will know the day. Because we are of the day. Who is of the day? Say, I'm not in darkness. Say, I will know the day. Brother Paul spoke boldly and emphatically. Based on revelation knowledge. We will know the day. Just like you know things. You know things. You have an unction from the Holy One. You know all things. Sometimes you just wake up and you say something and it happens. That way, every one of us will know the day. Except you're not you know, a believer or you, ignorance has been a ruler over your life. But now with this level of revelation we have, this level of things we're learning and growing in, you will know the day. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And of course, it's not going to be a ladder we will follow. Follow the ladder. <laughs> Those people, ignorance is not good. How can you be using ladder to go to heaven? I mean, can you imagine the way church people play? Ladder, 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 ladder. See, you are even singing it. The song is popular. <laughs> There's no ladder. There's no ladder. We shall be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Corruption shall put on incorruption. Mortality shall put on immortality. Glory to God. And we shall ever be with the Lord. Comfort yourself with this word. Can somebody shout hallelujah. So when Jesus said the son of man doesn't know the day. He was speaking as a man in the four gospels. The church will know the day. The church will know the times. The church will know the seasons. Then Jesus said the father will reveal to the son greater works. And he has already revealed greater works to the son when he rose from the dead and gave him all authority and gave him all revelation. Can I hear you say it again very loud? I do not walk in darkness. I have the light of life. So if the rapture is not revealed to you, it means you are walking in darkness. And believers ought not to walk in darkness. Because the new creation has the intelligence to know times and seasons. Now, why do things happen the way they do? You know, you hear some people say, God is mysterious. No, God is not mysterious. If God were to be a mysterious person, you would not have a Bible with 66 books revealing him. If God were to be a mysterious person, he will not have 66 volumes unveiling him. God is not mysterious. He has unveiled himself to those who care to learn. He has unveiled himself to those who care to learn about him. We are not of them who are in darkness, so we can know why things happen the way that they happen on the earth. Now, if Jesus says times and seasons are with the Father and are not given to them to know, but now the church can know, it shows that we can know why things happen the way they happen. And we can know when they happen, and we can know why they happen, and we can know how they happen on the earth. It means we can say to ourselves, this is what it is. This is what it is not. You know, back in the days when I was growing up in studying the Bible and still learning, you know, far back. If people asked me a question I could not answer, I used to have one scripture that I used to give them and shut them up. You want to know? No, I know you can answer. So there's no point to give you that scripture. That was my scripture for keeping people quiet. And once I quote it for you, even if you are whatever you will shut up <laughs> that scripture tells you shut up deuteronomy 29 29 
The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Dr. Damina, why are children born blind? Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to God. <laughs> but the ones that are revealed are for us and our children. So since that one has not been revealed, it means it belongs to God. That was a scripture I used to use. Now, I want to do some work on it. The Bible is the revealed word. The Bible is the revealed word. The problem is people don't study it. They just look for verses to back up their thoughts. Or they look for verses that will support their prayer to bend the hand of God. You know what I mean? Because most times church people want to twist God's hands. Say, what scripture can I use to put God in a corner and get God to do what I want him to do? They want to twist his hand. So they start looking for scriptures. Scriptures. That sound like they can put God in a corner. But you know, nobody can put God in a corner. He does what he wants to do. You know. And I have news for you. He has already done what he wants to do. He did it ahead of time. Because God does not react. God proacts. Nothing takes him by surprise. Glory to God. Now, so, Paul now answers. Because those are the thoughts. Those are the thoughts. What are those secret things? What are the things that belong to God? Brother Paul gives us an answer in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 10. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Eight. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Nine. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Ten. But God hath revealed them glory. unto us God, by his spirit. God hath. He didn't say God will. He said God hath revealed did you see that? God hath revealed. Not God will reveal. He hath revealed. So the Bible is the book of God's revelation. The book of God's revelation. Now the word mystery means secret. Mystery, secret. But God hath revealed them unto us. Now in verse 8, he says, God hid them. For the princes of this world known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But they didn't know because God hid it from them. Because it was ordained for our glory. Meaning what was hid from the princes of this world was the redemptive plan of God. So because they didn't know, they became instruments that God used to accomplish his plan. So God hid the things so he can accomplish the work of redemption. Now verse 9 says, eyes have not seen. Brother Paul was quoting from Isaiah 64 verse 4. Eyes have not seen nor ear heard. Neither has it occurred to the hearts of many things that God has prepared for them whom he loves. Now read for me verse 10 to 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Yeah. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Who hath known the mind of the Lord? But we have. We know. We know the mind of the Lord. How do we know the mind of the Lord? We have. 
the mind of Christ. The word mind of Christ is we have the intelligence of Christ. We have the understanding of Christ. We have the revelation of Christ. So we know God in Christ. Christ reveals God to us. So we know God via Christ. Please pay attention. We know God in Christ. Now, so we have the intelligence of Christ. God has revealed them in the past. The spirit has already revealed the truth about God. The spirit is not going to reveal. He has already revealed to us the truth about God. We are in the written word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The word ophilimos in the Greek, advantageous or useful for doctrine. Didascalia, teaching or explanation that brings you to reproof, evidence. Evidence that brings you to adjusting your mind concerning God that eventually results in spiritual growth, instruction in righteousness. So the scripture contains all of the revelation of God. Please pay attention. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Whereby when you read what I wrote, Brother Paul was saying, whereby when you read what I wrote, so the entire revelation of God is in written form. When you read what I wrote, you may understand my revelation in the mystery of Christ. When you read, because God's revelation has been revealed in the written word. Now look at me for a minute and I know some people, you know some people who have some theological background will say, but why are you giving Paul so much authority? Why are you giving Paul so much authority? I'm not the one giving Paul so much authority. Paul actually has so much authority. How do we know? Even Peter is a senior brother of all the apostles. Peter. He's the one that Jesus said, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. He's the only one that had the audacity to carry Jesus to a corner and tell him, Stop that! Don't be talking like that when people like us are here. You think this pocket is empty? How will they carry you when I'm standing here? Please don't be talking like that. Next time, think about me before you talk. I'm here for you. I've got your back. I'll take a bullet for you. <laughs> Peter, Peter. Jesus said, get it behind me, Satan. <laughs> when I'll be gone, you won't even know. <laughs> I mean, people like Peter, they are the fathers the founding fathers of the church. People like Peter. So if people like Peter were there, and brother Paul is speaking with such audacity, and he's telling all them, Peter, whereby when you read what I wrote. <laughs> now imagine, Peter ate with Jesus, slept with Jesus, rebuked Jesus, sat with Jesus, traveled with Jesus. Paul never saw Jesus once. Never. Paul and Jesus never met. Yet Paul is telling Peter them, whereby when you all read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Christ that I never saw. Why? Whereby we know no man after the flesh. Revelation knowledge. So now what will brother Peter say about Paul? Because Paul is speaking with a lot of audacity. See brother Peter's submission on Paul. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So, him. brother Peter is submitting that our beloved, see the emotions, our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Then look at brother Peter's classification of the Pauline theology. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, 
as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So brother Peter accepted and submitted that the Pauline's writings were scripture. That is everything brother Paul wrote was canon. Was canon. As in all of his epistles have written. And he said even I Peter some things that brother Paul wrote are hard for me to understand. He said, which some people that are unlearned and ignorant, they wrestle with the Pauline theology to their own destruction. So when brother Paul is speaking, you need to listen. Peter is saying, listen, we recognize the Pauline theology and we acknowledge that the epistles of Paul are in the same class with the canon of scriptures. They're in the same audacity and authority. Because of the revelation that Paul had. So when we read the revelation of Paul, we can unravel things that look like mystery in the Bible. So we do not have an excuse to say we do not know some things. No. There will be no different revelation. Honey, you know, when we get to heaven, we will not learn anything that contradicts what is in the Bible. This Bible will remain effective even in heaven. You better know it now. There is no other Bible in heaven that we will read. And if you don't know it here, you will continue Bible study there. It's the revelation of God. It's an eternal revelation. It's not like the Bible was given to us for temporal life on earth. We just use it for earth, earth life. No, it is settled forever. It is the eternal word of God. There's no other Bible. It is this same Bible that we will keep. This same revelation of God is what we will continue with. That's why Jesus calls it the living bread. He said, when you eat of it, you will never be hungry. It's eternal. Now, so we have to rely on the written word to explain things that happen the way they happen on the earth. We have to rely on the written word to explain things the way they happen on the earth. And we're going to be examining three personalities in this phase of study. Three personalities. There are actually four, but three. Three personalities. Number one, we are going to be studying God. I didn't say we're going to study about God. We're going to be studying God. That's number one. We are going to be studying God. Not about God. We are studying God. Number two. We are going to be studying man. Man. We are going to be studying man. Number three. We are going to be studying angels. Three personalities. We are going to be studying God. We are going to be studying man. We are going to be studying angels. And when we talk about angels. Under angels we are even going to study animals. Why did God create dogs, goats? Cow, camels, chameleon. What were they created for? Mosquitoes. What is their purpose? Is it to be giving us malaria? What's the mission? Why will God create tiny things like mosquitoes? When they hit you, ta, you must react. What is the purpose? Rats. And where do animals go when they die? We're going to be studying that. All of it is in the Bible. You know, animals were not created for food. I hope you know that. God never created for man to eat animals. Goats, chicken, all of them were not for eating. If you get to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, it is herbs and vegetables that were for the body of a human being. That's why people lived for a thousand years. It was after the flood of Noah when judgment came on the earth, man has seen that people started eating animals. 
It was not so in the beginning. It wasn't so. So we're going to be studying what was the purpose for animals because they are not for food. So we study God, man, angels. And in studying angels, we will also be examining Satan. We don't want to make Satan a major because he's not a major subject. He's a minor cause. He is a sub cause under angels. Because if you don't know somebody, you cannot tell his power and weakness. To be able to handle somebody, you must know him. So if you don't know Satan, you will be attributing to Satan what Satan does not qualify for. You'll be giving him more credit. You've got to know him to know what he can do and what he can never do. So that's why we're going to be studying Satan as a minor cause under the major angels. <laughs> amen. I said, Amen. You know, in life, when things happen, you either blame God or you blame man or you blame the devil. Is that true? Every time something happens, it's either God or man or the devil. If you succeed, you say it's the grace of God. If you fail, you say the devil is a liar. <laughs> If you succeed, the Lord has done it. If you fail, God punish the devil. <laughs> Let's look at God for a few minutes. What did God say about himself in the Bible? Again, when we study God, we start from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. So read for me Genesis chapter 1 verse number 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Again, God does not exist in time. God does not exist in time. So if you are at the beginning, it means you preceded the beginning. If you are at the beginning, it means you predated and pre-existed before the beginning. You couldn't have created the beginning and you are inside the beginning. You must be outside the beginning to create the beginning. So before the beginning began, God, if I was writing that, that's where I would have written Genesis 1.1. Before the beginning began, God. Then in the beginning, God created. Because God predated, God pre-existed, before the beginning. So the first thing about God. Is that God precedes time. God precedes time. Because he has the capacity. For foreknowledge. He has the capacity. For foreknowledge. So because he has the capacity for foreknowledge. He precedes time. So why does he foreknow things? Why does God foreknow things? He foreknow things not because he wants to foreknow it. God foreknows things not because he wants to foreknow things. He foreknows things because he is out of time. He is out of time. He does not operate in time. He operates out of time. God is not in time. It's only in time that you learn. If you are out of time, you don't learn. You know. You don't learn out of time. You just know. But in time, you learn. So God precedes time. In the beginning, God. So in studying God, the first information we have is that he precedes the beginning of every activity. He precedes the beginning of every activity.
That is the wisest person to listen to. The person who precedes the beginning of every activity is the wisest person to listen to on why things happen the way they happen. That's the only person that can explain because he precedes the beginning of all activities. So if you're going to know why things happen the way they happen on the earth, it has to be God. Only God holds that revelation. He is not a creation of anybody. He is not a creation of circumstances. God precedes time. God precedes time. Secondly, we're going to study man. What is man? Genesis 1, 26, 27. After God created the earth, created the moon, the stars, the sun, created the firmaments, then God created man. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God made man in his image, after his likeness, and gave man dominion over the works of his hands. Over the works of his hands. So God, man, and now angels. You know we readily do not have any information in the book of Genesis as to when angels were created. You will have to study the entire Bible to arrive at when angels were created and what they were created for. Stand on your feet. We continue in the next service. Glory to God. Are you blessed? We continue in the next service. Kabadaga. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are not in darkness. You are in the light. You have access to all the revelation of God concerning man, the planet, and why things happen the way they happen on the earth. Say to your neighbor, we have the answers to all the perplexing questions of life. Now look at me and say, I can never be confused. I have knowledge, I have revelation, I have clarity. I know what the future holds. It gets brighter and brighter. Until the perfect day, my steps are ordered by the Lord. My going out is blessed, my coming in is blessed. I am not in suspense and I am not in doubt. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. The manifestation of everything spoken concerning me in the word of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Please say very loud, I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that revelation knowledge flows like a flow. That everyone hearing the sound of my voice in this service, on television, social media, on radio, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, revelation knowledge like never before. Veils fall off in the name of Jesus. And everything that is not planted by God is rooted out. Is rooted out. Is rooted out. Is rooted out. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your word that is confirmed in our hearts. Confirmed in our lives. Thank you for your word that is confirmed within our circumstances. Now I speak to everyone here having challenges with circumstances. We command those circumstances to submit themselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, get your hands off. 
we rebuke every wind and every wave stop in the name of jesus now i command that you receive solutions and answers receive solutions receive answers in the name of jesus where you need a miracle this week receive that miracle receive it in the name of jesus thank you father for answer prayer in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen on a note of finality can we celebrate the word of god with a shout in this service glory glory amen a believer does not need to break any foundation because the only foundation a believer has is christ you don't break christ once you're born again you're on a sure foundation if things are not working it's not because you are under a curse it's not because you are not born again no things may not be working because of certain miscalculations on your part or lack of skill or lack of sensitivity to when the holy ghost gave you direction but it cannot be because there's a foundation a christian has no foundation to break a christian cannot be possessed by devils to be possessed means satan entered your spirit and sat there that's possession how can a christian who is born of god the dna of god is in you how can satan and god live together so that is a deception and is fraud to the body of christ Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in New Christian Camp Meeting 2021 and ask the counselor with Michael Bush. Theme in Christ Reality. Ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 31st January to 14th February 2021. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. daily on Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo, Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo, Excel FM 106.9 Uyo, Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo, Unio FM 100.7 Uyo, and Heritage FM 104.9 Uyo, and also live on Sunday 7.30 a.m. first service and 10.30 a.m. second service. Venue, Power City International, number 98, Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer. Be there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a service, what a word. I believe you've been impacted, affected with the word of his grace. Listen very carefully. It is God's intent for you to continue walking in this light. So I'm going to encourage you to keep following. Remember, every day, we're live right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. 12 noon GMT plus 1, 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. And in this season where we're in the midst of a program, Riot Live and Ask the Counselor, you can also be a part of the meetings every evening, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Now, listen carefully. If you're in an area around the world where you're following these teachings and there is no Christ-centered church where you can attend church. Two things are very important. Number one, God doesn't want you to be in isolation. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You need to belong to a local church, a local fellowship where you're able to learn with other brethren and beyond learning where you're able to serve the brethren with the grace of God and the gift of God upon your life. You know, the word of God teaches us against selfishness. When you begin to stay by yourself, you're being selfish. You are denying other brethren the grace of God upon your life. So I want to encourage you to ensure that you are a part of a Christ-centered fellowship. And if there's none in your area, send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina. Tell me where you are. If you want to host or you want to be the coordinator of the campus, we will train you, equip you, and help you start one in your country, in your community, so you become a lighthouse to the darkness in your community. Very, very important. I'm expecting to hear from you today. And if there is a Christ-centered church, it's good for you to belong there and make a difference. If there's none, we expect to hear from you. Remember also to order for our teaching materials, both the books and the audio teachings, so that you can equip yourself and establish yourself in the light of Christ Jesus. It's such a joy to be able to serve you the grace of God. My prayer for you is that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. 
that the reality of Christ will resonate in your mind. We rebuke sickness, disease, oppression. We come against whatever is not planted by God in your heart today. We command it rooted out. And Father, we thank you for miracles, healings, and testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. amen to your